Okay. Now the the screen we've got up in front is just a our test system, our um our fast track test system. And um it has all the modules that we do offer and probably looks quite different to a lot of your instances of fast track. Um I'll just go through them very, very quickly. It's just to give you a bit of an overview on, on the scope, I suppose, that we do cover. Um, the most common one is probably knowledge, is, is, is what most people um, have on their fast track. And um, one thing I also like to, to uh, highlight to people is the steps that we go through. It's at a basic level, but it, it really helps um, to get into some good habits uh, if you're just starting fast track or attempting to break maybe some old habits if you've been using fast track for a while is the first step we do when we're, when we're looking for anything, when we're trying to create a new document or, or um, looking for a, an existing document is always go to this top menu up here It's called the module menu. That's number one. And the second one we go through is this function menu. And this is number two. So today we're going to be looking at knowledge and we're going to be looking at documents. And the third step in Fast Track is to go and look for what library am I going to be creating that document in. So it's one step up the top is the module menu, number two is the function menu, and number three is the library. Now, so many times, and I know I've done it myself, um, I might be in compliance and I'm doing something or other and I get taken away and I come back and I start looking for something in knowledge that I'm already in compliance. So it's something, to, if you are taking away, just think, okay, what do I want to be in? Do I want to be in knowledge? And what function do I want to be? I want to be in documents. And okay, what library am I creating this one in? Okay, I'm in policies at the moment, just to give you a bit of an example. Um, very basic stuff, but uh, so many people get lost in the whole system. And as I say, I've done it certainly myself, and, and where is that document, or where is this, and I'm in the wrong module. So you can see if you can get in the habit of, another big thing about software that I've found in, in many years of training on software, is most people attempt to remember how to go about doing something in software, rather than thinking themselves through step by step, okay, what is it that I'm doing? And we attempt to, to develop the software in, in an intuitive way. So there is a thought process on, okay, what am I doing? And this is part of that thought process to get started in. There's always just, what's the number one step? Okay, look at the module. What module am I in? Module menu. Then number two, what function? And then number three is, is, the, um, is the documents. I should say the library. And I, I will repeat that a few times over the over this hour session and, and it is something that to, to be able to sort of get ingrained if you can. Um, yeah, so a little bit about all the different modules, just very quickly. Um, knowledge is, is the main document management uh, system. Governance is, um, is something about uh, just managing business documents within the company. Uh, compliance is probably the other popular one that um, most people have, all about um, managing audits and corrective actions and generating checklists from audits and things like that. Uh, entity is one that um, many people also call system and um, that has where you add the people and the, the positions and the uh, the users in fast track. There's always three parts of, of uh, you need to add in to create a user in fast track. There's always a person, there's always a position which is also in, within the organizational structure and there's a user. Uh, there's also the risk module and as you can see every time we, we for the new uh, people new to fast track Every time we change the module menu at the top, we get a different choice of function menus along here as well. Um, each time we change it, there's a workplace, the environment, competency is all about training, uh, supplier is managing supplier information, and, uh, and also equipment, pretty self-explanatory, and, uh, and the resource is more about managing fast track resources as well. This is where we go into the diaries and whatnot. So it's just a little bit of a, I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview on all the different um, modules that you can have. Now, I um, explained about those those 
first three steps, those module, function, and, uh, and library. Now, if we're, if we're searching for a particular document within FastTrack, we still go through the same process. We go and uh, uh, the, the, um, the module menu at the top, the function menu. But one step we do do different is if you think you know what library that, that document is in, you could always search under that particular library if you like. But I find I might think I know it, but most times I, I don't. And I go to the very top menu of the library and then search for the process that you're after or the, the document you're after. And I might be after something like training. And that searches all those libraries, not just if I was clicking on policy, that's all that, that it search under. This is searches under every one of those libraries. And it makes life a lot easier. Sometimes you might get quite a lot of responses from the one. That's the only downside. So um, there's quite a few responses from the training um, filter that I put through. But it does usually speed up the process of, of searching for documents if you go to that very top one. And that can apply to any of the modules whatsoever. Um, it's a bit slow. Uh, if I'm searching for, say, audits in compliance, and I go all the way to the top and then search from there, not necessarily trying to guess where it's, it, where it's at. Um, when you're creating a document, it's a different story. You go knowledge, you go document, then you decide, okay, what library do I want this created in? And, uh, and you go to that library. But within searching, makes quite a big difference. Um, another thing a lot of people forget, and I'm sort of certainly guilty of that as well, is sometimes you might have 10, 15 pages of documents and you think you can't find it. Well, remember up here, you can click from one page to another. There's only two pages there. This one takes you back one page, and this one takes you all the way to the front. So that's something to remember as well. Um, also, when you're filtering through the documents, you can click on, say, if you want to filter it all under the what we call the RecRef or the record reference, and that will list it under ascending or, or descending order, it depends on which way you click it. Um, you can also click it under date and, um, and filter it that way as well. Um, and remembering it, it only um, it only searches or, or filters it under the dates if you've already versioned it. That's the only time that uh, that a date will come up, uh, you know, beside that record. All right. Um, another thing I wanted to go through today, and it is in our uh, our quick reference guides, um, is a little bit about the menu structures behind um, behind Fast Track. And it's not crucial to have to know. But it, it certainly helps your understanding of, 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 say, you get different errors when you click on a document, what is happening. And I was going to um, just draw that up in paint today. This is like my little whiteboard, I suppose. And the three main menus that we, um, that we cover in Fast Track. The main one that we use a fair lot of is called the myth. And I'm not too sure what that actually stands for, but another one is the pub library, and that really stands for publishing. And this one's the lib. Okay. Now they all act behind the scenes in Fast Track, and you should be able to access those. Um, uh, through the file directory, but I was also going to go through the different steps in Fast Track and when they're using those folders. So, for example, the first thing we do is we create a draft, and that draft sits in the meth folder. Next thing we might do is want to edit a document that also comes out of the meth folder. Similar to editing is, and this is what we're going to go through in a minute on all these different steps, is check in, check out. Once again, that all comes out of the meth folder. Even when we get to the level of approving a document, that also 
comes out of the mess. When we actually get to versioning the document, that's when it starts coming out of the pub folder. And it's always the latest version as well. Uh, say, for example, it's 1.5 will be coming out of the pub folder. Uh, it also publishes in the pub folder, and this can be changed, but the PDF version, once it's version, it, it creates a PDF um, version of that document, and that's usually what's posted to the, to the web portals. Um, the library is mainly meant for all the other versions of the document, say before 1.5, we have 1.1, um, 1.2, Three and say 1.4. Now you can ask to keep a lot more of those versions, but uh, normally it's up to four, if not five, different versions are kept in that in that lib folder. So just to go over it again, all these guys come out of that mess folder: the editing, the approving, the check-in, and the check-out. Now one thing I did forget to put in there as well, out of the pub folder is what I call when you double click on a record after it's versioned and this is probably the most common mistake people make and once again I do it myself I don't think about it and, and, and go and double click on a document that's not versioned and I'll come up with an error saying it's not in the pub folder that's the main thing what, what happens when you version it it actually creates the version in the pub folder and when when you do double click on that, that record, it'll go looking for it in the pub folder. And then all these are more just for archiving purposes. So it just gives you a little bit of an overview on, um, on the background, I suppose, of the folders and, uh, and how it works and where they're coming from. All right. Now we just wanted to get into creating a document. And once again, we're thinking it through. What are we creating? We're creating something in knowledge. And what is it going to be? It's going to be a document. And what library are we creating? And we're creating in the policies library. And what do we want to do? We want to add a document. So we click on the icon here. And it gives us a choice of two. It gives us a choice of being able to create a document, which is an internal document. Or we can always create what's what we call a reference document as well. Um, I suppose the way I might bring up another paint for you just to use as a whiteboard again. We don't want to say that. Reference documents. Reference docs are, um, are usually connected to websites. So it's a hyperlink to a website. An external document it's more sitting on say another server. It's not actually sitting in, in Fast Track itself, but you want to connect it to documents that might be sitting on, on your server as well. Now you can have ex, ex, uh, external documents sitting on a website. They might be regulations or guidelines or whatever. So, you know, we don't have to get sort of too pedantic on the meaning, but it's generally that's the overview on when we're talking about reference document and external documents. And with that in mind, it's a good idea to keep them in a separate library uh, to your normal documents. Uh, down here we have what we call reference data, and we've separated it into three subfolders called external documents and reference documents. And um, this lists all the different um, variety of externals and, and here's one, say, this is a PowerPoint. So the aim of a reference document or an external document is to be able to just click on that link and it'll go and open that particular room, that particular link and off we go. It's a PowerPoint presentation. And to give you an idea if people haven't used this one before is we look at the doc information and, and the main emphasis or the, the most important aspect of that is this link here. And when we, when we create an external or a reference document, we fill in all the other information, but this is the most important one. We create the link or we copy and paste the link into here. 
is no use clicking on that actual folder there. We need to actually copy and paste the link into that aspect. All right. One thing I was a little bit um, uh, quick on, on not explaining the other steps of this process as well. Um, there is this process menu that you've probably seen me using uh, opening up that record just, just now. A process menu is, is what I describe as more the action. What is it that I want to do? Uh, there's another menu below that, that appears when you open up a record. And this is what we call the lower process menu. And this is probably more of a history, the information that it's attached to that, that record. This is more the action one. This is more the information attached, just to give you a bit of an overview on those, those menus. Um, and the process menu has, um, I suppose, several menus within one menu. If I click on this admin, it will allow another menu to come up, but it's all within the process menu. If I click on this little green uh, arrow, this takes me back to a, the, the menu beforehand. And if I click on the document, it refreshes out of that particular record. But as you can see, the process menu stays the same. All right, what we're going to do today is add a new document. So we'll click on Create. And as you can see, I made the, <laughs> the most basic mistakes. I didn't check the old 1, 2, 3. The old, OK, I'm in, in the module menu. I'm in the function menu, but I'm not in the right library. So easy mistake made, not even uh, listening to my own, um, my own pointers. Uh, another pointer as well on the libraries, if you can see these dots here, that shows that there's a sub-library within that library. And you can open up the different sub-libraries below. Uh, with operation, that's got some dots. And you can see the sub-libraries below that. Support libraries is, is the same, support documents, I should say. And as is the reference. If it didn't have any sub-libraries, there wouldn't be any dots beside it. So let's think it through again. I'm in knowledge, I'm in documents, I'm in corporate documents. What I want to do, I want to create a new document within the policies library. All right, we click on add and I want to create an internal, a new internal document. So we just go through the process. This is just automated, this document reference. Some of you might have a manual process that you go through, but a lot of it is automated that way. And we just type in into the yellow fields, which are the mandatory fields. The white ones are the free fields, and the gray ones are the read-only fields. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to do a training test document. This is my name. Uh, there's a new screen that, um, that's just been an updated screen, this one, that, that a few of you might not have seen yet. And it's just a way of... of of subcategorizing, I suppose, um, finding different people that way, or the usual old way is you can type in to find it. I'll cancel out of that one. We might look into, okay, a different business unit. When there's only one window open like this, all you need to do is click on the one you're after and then click Save, and that populates it. But other windows, and I'll show you that in the, f in, um, in the future, on, it might bring up three different windows within one, and there's a different way of populating to make sure it comes onto that field. Now, there's always a template that's attached to the documents. Now, you can have as many templates as you like. Sitting in the background, here's this um, folder structure that I was telling you about. There's that mess folder, there's a pub folder, and there's a lib folder. There's also an important one, it's called the import folder if you're importing documents into Fast Track. And the other one we're looking at here are the temp is the templates folder. And this has all the different templates of all the different screens. Now you can create your own templates within this folder and just call it any, any document dot dot. You can go and search for it and click on that and that will open up as a template for that particular document. There's a default one that's always attached to each library and you can change that around as well. We won't go into, um, won't go into that today, it's a bit more involved. But this comes up with the template um, all the time. Now, the keywords is a good habit to get into, uh, especially when you're searching. It will also search under those particular keywords to bring up those, th this particular document if you're searching for this document. And I might put training, and it's just a comma and a space. 
I might put test and I might put online. Topics is another one that it's a way of of, of categorizing the documents. Uh, some people use it a lot, some people don't. And this is just three screens that, are, that I was highlighting within one that you have a choice of, okay, what is the main topic we're looking under? It might be under finance and admin, and then it gives us choices over here. Or it might be under HR, and it gives us choices over here. Now, the main thing to look for when you're looking through these three windows is making sure there's some something in this bottom left-hand window. Uh, it won't be populated into the field if something's not in that bottom left window. So we might just click on Human Resources, and it comes up on the bottom left, and then we save it. And OK, we're in Human Resources. Now, the involved and access are connected. These two fields are connected. Uh, use it warily, this one. Usually we suggest just to leave it on, on everybody, but maybe someone in, in uh, HR uh, about certain payroll aspects or, or uh, certain security documents that you might not want everybody accessible to this. And remember, there's all sorts of different levels within fast track of security. Uh, but this is another way of, of a security level on a document level. And you can click it to involved only. And then whoever is actually stipulated within this involved window are the people that have access to view, to edit, to do anything with this document whatsoever. So you can go and find those people. And there's Jill McDonnell. And let's put Susan in. I'm just double clicking on that. And you can add as many as you like. We'll put me in there. And we'll put Pete Smith in there. And what that does is populates it to that particular window, and only those people have any any access to the, this particular document uh, whatsoever. Now, remember, if you're the one creating it, to make sure you put yourself in there as well. Uh, many times we've had people create and put all the different people in there, but haven't put themselves, and then give us a call. I can't I, I can't access this document. Oh, that's probably why. Now, if you ever want to remove anyone from that. We just go the opposite way and double click on that and it takes them back out again. And then we save. Now I'll do that back to everybody. And that's generally you'll find most of the documents are created with everybody. It's nice and safe that way. Security is great, but it can get also complicated. All right, so we're just saving that. Now this is, once again, this is another way of, of categorizing, and, and we will run a, a training session just on indexes. Now, within Fast Track, it's been going for, uh, I think, just under 30 years or so now. So there's a few leftover terms that haven't been cleaned out. And TOC, which stands for Table of Contents, that's exactly the same as you'll see when we use index. And also, um, geez, I've just got a blank. Manuals. We use table of contents, manuals, and indexes. All other mean exactly the same thing. Uh, so if you see those terms, they're meaning the same stuff. Now, I want to be able to. Do I want to add this? You can choose to add it to a, an index or not. I'll look under say training. And what I'm doing is typing into there and searching within all the indexes. And here we go. There's a training program. And I click on OK. What that's done is add that record to that particular index. And the index is a link to adding documents to the web portal as well. So once again, that's what we'll go into um, uh, in a few, well, not a few weeks' time. After Christmas, we'll, uh, we'll do an, a, um, a subject on indexes as well. All right, so we've added a document. Uh, we've got two pages here. There's a few different ways of um, of finding that document now. Usually you'll find if you've just added it, it'll be the last one in line, which it's not. Where did that, I didn't even note what the name of that document was going to be. What did I call it? Let's have a look. There we go, 908. All right, we'll keep that in mind. So we just searched for that particular document under that library because we knew we actually created it within that library. 
now what we want to do. We've created that draft. One thing I did want to show you that you might not be using or you might be, and I find it fantastic, is just bringing up the workflow. And that's the workflow on the left-hand side there. And all I did was right-click on the actual record and click on workflow. That actually turns workflow going. And then you click on this actual little radio button, and that turns on this workflow. And why it's fantastic um, is there's only the one document under that search, but um, let me just bring up those documents again, and we'll turn on workflow again. What you can do, especially the document tr controllers amongst you, what you can do is you can click on any one of these records and see where at where these particular documents are at. As you can see, it, it shows the name of the person who's created the document and the date on when that was created and what step, what level that's at. So it's great for keeping track of, okay, where, where are my documents at? What's going on here? What level is that at? Uh, I was hoping to get that document back and, and into uh, circulation by now. But, uh, oh, look, it's only still up to schedule. So that's a great way of just sort of filtering through all the different records and seeing where are they at at a very quick visual reference on what level they're up to. All right. Now, to get the library back again, we just click on this button on the top, this toolbar button, or you can actually click on documents and that refreshes the whole page. All right. I'll find our document that we created again. There it is. And I click on the little record button. That just highlights when we're instructing it to do anything, it, it is instructing it on that particular record. Now we click up here on review. And what we want to do, we want to edit. We're still in knowledge. We're still in documents. We're still in the policy library. And we're going to edit this particular record. It's the one with the record button highlighted. Now, the editing process, I find I try to define this between editing and, uh, and check in and check out. Editing I use more for just quick changes, uh, not a, a large construction of a new document. Uh, I, I find Word has a habit, because when we edit a document, um, Fast Track allows Word um, to extra to access it. And um, Word sometimes has a habit of you might go away and made all these changes and uh, does funny things like closing itself down. So I get in the habit of just making some quick changes and then saving it and then closing Word. And then at least I know that those, doc those, um, those changes have been made. Now, where's that document gone again? We can go searching for it this way. And it's not there. Or we can go 908. Go searching for it this way. And there it is. All right, so we've edited the doc document. And now what we want to do is check it out. I find the checking out process is similar to most people know when we're talking about exporting a document. It actually exports it out of Fast Track when it goes through this checkout process. This is the most crucial part of the checkout process. And a lot of people um, uh, are mistaken, I suppose, by wanting to open up the document at this stage. This is where it's crucial to save this document. And something I recommend to people um, that are controlling a lot of the documents is to create a folder. I just call it Fast Track Checkout. You could just call it Fast Track on your desktop. And Fast Track will go and look for that particular folder and, and save that, this information in that folder. Uh, so it saves you having to try to find it, each, um, each document each time if you're just saving it on the, on the desktop by itself. Uh, just a, a little tip that I find makes all the difference. Now, what we want to do is save that particular document. We don't want to change the, um, the name of this document whatsoever. So we save this. And then it gives us a choice, OK, now we want to open it. And here's the changes that we made before. And I'll put checkout is, let's call it 
related to exporting a document. And is used more for large changes. All right, and that's just like any other document now on your uh, on your computer. Uh, it's just sitting in a folder, and we treat it exactly the same way. We save it, and we can close that. Now, usually the the checkout and check in process might take you know 10, 20, 30 days. Sometimes depends on how long, how much of an urgency it is. I'm obviously doing it within five minutes. Um, so you'd, you'd go away, check it out, and then you'd come back and then hit check in. But it's already waiting for me here, so I can hit check in and then browse. And it goes and tries to find where did I have that that um, that checked out document. And once again, it looks for that folder that we've created, and we've got to make sure that it's exactly the same number. So it's 908 we're looking for. In, inserts it in there, and then we click checking and we've checked the document back in again. So I'll have a quick look for it. 908. Okay, there it is. And what we want to do now is, is view our changes to make sure they're saved. So there's this intuitive process that we're following um, that this sort of guides you through. Click on View. Record button has been selected. And here's the, the, the viewing of the changes that we've made so far. Now, an easy mistake made when we're viewing a document is you might see a mistake and go, oh, yeah, I'll just change that. We're not able to make any changes in the view mode. That's a very crucial one. We'd have to go back to edit it if, if it, there's small changes or if it's quite a large one and you're not happy with it at all, go back out and, and check it back out and go through the process again. So that's just a way of viewing. Sometimes. Uh, fast track gets a little bit lost and it's waiting for a process to happen and it's going through this processing. Um, when you know the document's already been open and we've closed it, you know we're not waiting any further, you can just close that particular window down. But if it is processing and you're waiting for something to happen, you need to just be patient. It is doing the processing for you. All right. Now what I do is I get the workflow going again and click on record. And as we can see here, it's following us through the steps. We created this draft, we've checked it out, and we've checked it back in. This is my name under it and the dates. So I find this is, this is quite handy. And now you can say, oh yeah, now I want to refer this particular document. So I've got the document I've just created, and you can click on this button as well, and this refers it on. Now, the most important part in this screen is really this date. And why I say that is this is the date that's, that you're saying to the, the person you're referring to, hey, I'd like this finished by this date. And this starts the whole emailing process. The, the next most important part of it is putting this window um, with, with people that you want to contact, anyone you want to notify about this particular document. So you're referring it on to Let's, let's refer it on to Greg. So when it reaches this due date of the 20th of the 12th, it will start the whole escalation process and notify Greg's boss that this document hasn't been attended to yet. And then it continues going through that escalation process after that as well. So it's a very important, we get into a habit of allowing the system to do all the work, which is great, but I'd like to get in the habit of reminding everyone to keep on checking what is it, what is the information on this screen, um, when do I want this document checked out, when do I want it finished by I should say or at least referred back to me and you can click on the calendar just like any of the other calendars and say oh yeah I might give them a bit more time, I might say I want it back by Christmas Day and I might be referring it to a few people. So just think through what is it that I want to say on that particular document. Not that particular screen, I should say. All right, and we are okay that. All right, and we click on done. And down here it said, okay, the green ones are the ones that have completed, and the orange one is the most recent one. 
So what we do is we refer it out to someone and then that person will then click on and return it back and that person's name will come up under return. That person or also might say you might refer it on to, to one of your superiors and your superiors might say or, or anyone for that matter might say well I don't like that document whatsoever, I'm going to reject that document, I'd like you to start that all over again and um, that's part of that reject process. Now you might have a totally different workflow in here, this is all customizable and, and you, you may have uh, customized it. Most of the time the documents aren't customized too much, the workflow and the documents, but there is a workflow in every different module and in every different function. Um, so it gives you a guideline of, of where are you at uh, with any particular record. All right, so maybe I've heard from people and it's all okay and I haven't haven't really received a return yet, but I'm I'm deciding okay, I'm going to now approve this document. And it's the same process. Only the document owner can approve the document. And it updates the status automatically. Once again, what date do we want? And what we're doing at this stage is not what date we want the actual document returned to us. It's what we're saying at the approved level, the approval is all about really the content. Am I happy with the content? The next step is really sending it on to the document controller to say, okay, now go and publish the document and publish it to the web portal if, if that's where it's going as well. And that's what we're saying at this point is, okay, when do we want it version by? Do I want it version by two days time? Yep, I want to get this going. All right, I want it version by then. Do I want Greg to know about it? No, well, let's get someone else, uh, let's get Pam onto this and we might take Greg out of there. So Pam might be the, uh, the document controller. So we're thinking through what do we want in each field, just habits to get into really each time. So we now approve that document and we're sending it on to the document controller to say, okay, it's all approved but I want you to version it by that particular date. Now, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to update this workflow here. One thing you can do is actually click on the bottom of the record, not the top, which will open up the actual document, but the bottom of the record here, and that should update it. There we go. Now, remember we talked about um, in the uh, the three different three different folders that we talked about. There was a mess folder, there was a pub folder, and there was a, a lib folder. Now if I go and try to open this particular document, it'll say, no, I can't find it. And it's saying I can't find it in the pub folder because it's not version yet. It hasn't been added to the pub folder, but it's looking for it in the pub folder. That's the sort of thing that it's good to have a bit of an overview of those um, those folders because it's you know, when, when it comes up with an error, oh my God, what have I done? If you have a bit of an understanding of it, oh, that's right, okay, I've tried to open up a document that hasn't been versioned. If it had been versioned, it would open up the previous version document, not the one that you're working on. You'd have to go back and check it out or edit it or even view it to actually view the one that you're actually working on. So it's just something to keep in mind when you've got a fair lot of documents underway and you can say, oh, that's right, I've only approved it, it hasn't been versioned yet. So we're now we'll act as the document controller. Let's have a search for it again. And there it is. As we can see, it updates the status. And also there's a color process in that as well. Now, if you do print that quick reference guide out in color mode, it will show you all the different statuses and the various colors that that comes up. Once again, it's just a way of, of, uh, of you being able to look at a lot of records and seeing what level they're at. I find it quite handy just to, to use this left hand, um, uh, left hand menu, the update status menu. Okay, so now we want to version this document. We've approved it, we're all fine, and we're putting on the document controller's hat, I suppose. We click on the version and up comes the window. It, it um, it populates my name into the authority field, and that's fine if you um, if you're the document controller as as well as the um, the person who approves it. And reason for change is we're just going through some uh, we're going through some training. 
and we OK that. Most of the other stuff, I don't find I, I use it too much. Oh, there is a one aspect that if you like to always set your particular versions, you can click on this um, option and then you can type in 4.0, 4.9, whatever option that you want. Or you can leave on increment version, that will just go through 1.1, 1.2, 1.38 each time you actually, um, each time you version it. Some people like to do it when they have a major change of a document. They might reset this to 2.0 and then change it back and then it goes from 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 and then continues that way as well. All right. So we're okaying this. All right. Now this this will stay there until we've actually refreshed that window. And once again, it takes a little bit of time updating, and we just click on that that bottom window. With this one, it's an interesting one that the version, although it's actually um, technically version now, um, it doesn't it goes through a process. The following morning, after you've versioned the document, it goes through a process of, of publishing the document um, to the pub folder and then creating a PDF. And then, if it's part of the web portal, you'll then publish it to the web portal. And that's all, all happening um, the, the following morning after you create that document. It's not, it doesn't happen immediately. And the main reason for that is so it, you might be creating a lot of documents and doing a lot of publishing. Um, and it uh, it uses up, once you're doing quite a lot of documents, it uses up uh, quite a lot of computer resources. So we've um, we've scheduled it for first thing in the morning. So if you are going to be doing any versioning, probably best to do it late afternoon so it's all ready for you the next morning. Uh, the next step we go through is the issuing of the actual document. The issuing is really just letting everyone know out there that We've now created a new version of this document, and everyone else can go and access it via the web portal if they're not uh, people that are logged into Fast Track, or if they are, they can log in and check this particular document out. Now, this particular screen is a little bit different to most of the other screens. Um, it highlights all the different email addresses over here on who you want to notify, but to notify more than one, you need to click on each one that you want to notify. And the way we do that is click and hold down the control button at the same time and that will hold that that will um uh, that will allow you to uh to highlight the different people. You can also click on the top one and then click down shift and that will highlight all of them all up. So you can go to the various options here and this this gives you all the different accounts. So you might not want all of them but you might need to choose quite a few, and you highlight a few of them that way. Um, if, if you've got yourself organized by department, you might want to uh, notify people by department as well. Now, also uh, something to check in this one as well is it's, it's default to be notified up here. Um, this is saying, OK, I want to be notified when you actually um, receive the email. So I usually go about unticking that one. And also down here, it's a fairly outdated uh, email message on this, on what you're notifying people about. It's saying to people that when we were creating documents and they would print them out and put them in their physical manuals to print out this and put it in the manual. We did change it and then everyone didn't like what we changed it to and then we changed it again. And what we highlight to people now is delete what you don't like and uh, Type in what you feel like. Here is a new document. Check it out. All right. That's not checking it out from Fast Track. That's just to have a look at it. All right. So we're versioning that one. I'm oh, sorry. We're issuing that. And this is pretty much the last step in the process uh, from creating all the way through to. Um, to versioning and also issuing. So I've notified everyone now, all right, we've created this document, go and check it out. 
and down the left hand side is how we followed the whole workflow process through. All right. Now I also wanted to show you a little bit about the bottom process menu. So you can use this process menu similar to using it down the left hand side. It's got all the exactly the same steps to check in, check out. But one aspect that uh, I forgot to mention was when there's a document checked out and you need to access it, someone's taking a long time or you urgently need to say, okay, I need to uh, have access to that document, you can cancel the checkout and that will allow you to be able to check it out as well. That's the main reason for that cancel button there. Uh, but as I was saying, you can follow this process through. Some people like to use it along this process menu. Other people like to use it down the workflow process. That's up to you. This just lets you know where you're at. Whereas this one, it just guides you through as well. All right, I'm going to hit this green button and I'm going to bring up the actual record behind this, uh, this document. All right, now, so if you want to make any changes to that, you can go ahead. But what I really wanted to show you is this lower process menu down here. Now, you might have all of these. You might have a few of these. We are starting to customize these a lot more. Um, and, uh, and, and people have a variety of, of what might appear there. Uh, the, the main reason, I, I suppose, or, or the, uh, the most common use for people to use this, this lower process menu is really the history. If I click on history, this gives them an idea of what's been happening with this, this, uh, this documentation. Just like the workflow, this lets you know what's, what's happening with this record. As you can see, each step has been entered into the history from when we first created it to the check-in, check-out, approving all the way through the process. So that's another way of finding, okay, who did this or who did that? via this history menu on the lower process menu. Another one which is quite popular um, is adding notes. So you might want to just add a particular note to this, this document and it's just filling in some information so there's just a, an ongoing record I suppose, it's a bit like a journal. Uh, attaching a document, the main difference between attaching a document and linking a document is the attachments aren't updated. Uh, we just add, a, add an attachment, this could be um, JPEGs of photos, of, of scans, of Excel documents, anything like this that can be added through this browse process. So we browse and go and find what particular document you're after on your desktop or wherever that might be. Uh, but once you've attached that document to this particular record, if you change that document again, it doesn't get updated. You'd have to go and reattach it if, the, if, uh, if you do change that document. Whereas with documents, and you link a document, these are documents that you're linking from within Fast Track. If you do actually change that document within Fast Track, it will be changed immediately via that link. And this is a process, and we can go into this a little bit later on, but this just gives you a, a big long list of all the different libraries, and you go and find what document, what library that document is sitting in, and this updates it, and it might be this particular document, and then we add it over to the left-hand side. As you can see, there's quite a few documents already linked to this record, and that's just one more that will be linked. But once again, it's, a, it's, it's very valid to, to remember to... Uh, when that document does get updated, then um, it will get updated via that link as well. So that's the main difference between the document and the, the attachments. The action's probably more relevant to when you're, say, for example, in an audit and you want to create a corrective action, you add a particular relationship immediately by adding an action. Um, you can do exactly the same via relating as well you can add a relationship to this particular record. So, for example, there might be training documents that are related to this document, this, this particular record. So you can add particular records that way and relating is the same as via the document linking as well. The schedule is, this might be a SOP, a standard operating procedure. It might need to be reviewed every three months or six months. So you can actually add a, a particular schedule to this. 
and it will remind you however you set up your diary process on okay this is due for a due, uh, to, due for a review in 30 days so you add a schedule through this process it brings up another window and you you uh, want to know what continued frequency and then what date it's going to be coming up by and who you want to notify. So that's just a, a fairly quick rundown on the lower process menu. It's quite a handy one to access information around that record, whereas what I was saying before, the, the top process menu is more action related. Now what I might do, hopefully I didn't whirl through that too quickly. I know there's some some people that haven't used fast track with us. Uh, use, there's plenty of people that are probably quite experienced at using fast track. So I might open it up to questions now, guys. And uh, hopefully that's been helpful for you. I'll just unmute you all. We haven't put you to sleep out there, have we, guys? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, did we have any particular questions relating to uh, to documents today? Um. Nothing for me. This is the first time I've accessed fast track, so I'm still trying to get my head around all the menus and stuff. Okay, and I will go over it again, but it's so crucial that that step one, that step two, step three, that always looking for what module you're in. I'll get you out of trouble so so many times as it does with me as well and then go on to the function menu and then go on to the library menu. Um, if you just get into that habit all the time when you're first starting, it'll make life so much easier for you. Alright, one thing that will help um, is that quick reference guide as well. Um, so everyone's had a bit of an overview and then to be able to just go back to that reference guide and say, oh, geez, how do you do this or how do you do that? And, uh, and use that workflow on the left-hand side. I find that's, that's a great visual reference of turning on that workflow and seeing where you're at on that particular document, especially if you're controlling a lot of documents, I find um, and that's a great benefit as well. Um, yeah, the, the other tips are just thinking through what you're doing rather than trying to remember it each time. Um, that's an important one. Where am I? What am I trying to achieve? What document am I working on? What record am I working on? All right, if we don't have any more questions, <laughs> 